Hi all, let's have a look at game 20 of the 20 games given to me recently by Deep Mind. So, in this game, under T-set conditions, Stockfish 8 playing white against Alpha Zero. The opening set is the Shigorin defense. So, Shigorin was the adopted father of the Soviet, <clears throat> the old USSR chess school. And he had very creative ideas and the Shigorin defense named after him and some of the ideas for example giving up the bishop pair for the two knights and that particular idea is expressed in this particular variation of the Shigorin we have bishop g4 here and now black voluntarily giving up the light square bishop and here getting a lot of central pressure though so pressure on dark squares but now giving up the other bishop as well and you could say, well, that's increasing a bit the pressure on, on light squares in a way. But look at the white center. It looks pretty solid here. This is the end of the book uh, given to both engines. So a fascinating debate, really. It's a classic imbalance, the bishop pair versus the two knights. However, white also has, because of these pawn captures, dynamic B and G files here so pressure points and that might actually cause a concession to black uh, in fact here with the black king in the center white now doesn't play a normal developing move but rather goes on the attack queen b3 hitting b7 and it's also hitting f7 so it's not possible it seems to castle uh, because that would neglect f7 there uh, so and in fact it seems pretty unpleasant to consider moving the pawn here with b6 uh, if b6 then that weakens this diagonal in fact white can play the forcing move d5 and then check and this is very very awkward indeed you know if queen d7 bishop b5 end of game basically c6 <laughs> it's just going to be a total disaster after that uh, so if king f8 then white just plays c4 this is really undesirable with bishop b4 is a now threat it's just a winning position so black doesn't touch that and doesn't want to castle we have knight g e7 just offering b7 so is this a poison pawn well stockfish 8 dares take it uh, now black castles we have queen a6 now sometimes the queen could be a tactical target if white for example castled later though with the queen protected on d6 there might be things like knight takes d4 unveiling an attack on a6 so the, the queen's yeah bit um sometimes a tactical target especially pardon me if the bishop is is going to g2 then leaving the queen neglected so that's why at the moment uh yeah it's good that the bishop's protecting the queen as well rook f d8 rook d1 uh, just to show what I was meaning there, if bishop g2, you might think, uh, then queen g6, and then bang, knight takes d4, exposes an attack on the queen, uh, with the bishop not protecting the queen here. And this, even this position, though, is okay for white. It's not such a big deal. Uh, so anyway, rook d1, rook a b8, and now h4, h5, bishop e2 we have rook b6 the queen dropping back to c4 rook db8 and now the delicate queen a4 queen g6 king f1 guarding g2 and also rook g1 seems interesting black invades the eighth e4 cutting off the queen from b1 e takes on uh this Rook 8 b2, you might think. Is that interesting? Bishop c1 seems fine. For example, here, if e takes, there's queen a3, and that's good for white. Looking at the rook, and yeah, a lot of pressure here on black. So we have e takes d4, c takes queen d6, d5, the center is being pushed here, knight e5, f4, the knights have been kicked around. We have knight 5 to g6. On knight g4, the knight's not totally comfortable there because of f3. 
And in this position holds king f2 when it's connecting rooks and has bishop e3, for example, to queen c5. And that's very nice for white indeed. Uh, so we have knight going back to g6. Rook h3, so not neglecting the h4 pawn. White could have played this uh, still and just to sort of play this after rook h1 hitting the knight. And this is not bad for white at all. <laughs> it's there's a lot of pressure. The bishop pair is is dangerous. The h file is dangerous. Yeah, this is not very pleasant for black. So rook h3 though gives other ideas as well. The rook's flexibility now for, uh, along the third rank. That third rank which is clear in this position. So there's opportunities for rook b3, rook c3, rook g3. Lots of opportunities. C6 is played. On knight takes f4, you might think, hang on, what about knight takes f4? There's actually e5 exposing an attack on the knight. So this is picking up the knight. So that's not possible. So c6, f5, knight e5. Now white takes on b1 and plays king g2. So the king's kind of manually castled here. You might think, well, hold on a sec. The center is a bit loose, isn't it? Well, there's always a penalty here. The queen is actually quite well placed on a4, looking at e8. So if this took, there's danger. Black played the aggressive knight takes f5. So it looks impressive, and it's based on this loose piece on d2. Um, if black plays c takes, just to show the dangers here, uh, rook g3 might actually be even stronger than immediate check uh, but check here rook g5 and then all of a sudden black's king is in big trouble so for example like this and then bang queen takes e5 bishop takes is like winning material so black needs to be careful now this tactic is based on white not being able to take because of queen takes d5 check hitting the bishop uh, so this is nice actually for black so uh, we have actually bishop takes h5 ignoring that it's just playing bishop takes h5 queen c5 and now the bishop actually goes back to d1 um, again you know if e takes queen takes d5 check to take d2 so bishop goes back to d1 here and now we have rook b2 if we look at knight d4, there's rook c3 here. That's comfortable for white. <clears throat> Taking on c6. Uh, the bishop's holding the queen. Things are being held together. On c takes d5, then white can take on f5. There's no queen d5 check. <clears throat> Mommy. So rook b2 uh, is played. Rook c3 using that third rank to evict the queen. But offering the h4 pawn as well, king f1, so pretty dynamic. Uh, so equal on pawns at this m very moment. On queen d6 here, bishop c1 seems good to evict the rook, and then taking on a7 as possible. So uh, we have queen b6, bishop e3 still harassing the queen, bishop c1 trying to kick the rook out. So the rook goes to b6. If the rook goes to b1, then queen c2, hitting the rook again, hitting the rook again, and then we have finally d takes c6, for example. But even stronger might, yeah, c6 is dropping even stronger. Is first to play this, a bit of spice added <laughs> to the cooking, yeah. So white's just better than that. Uh, so rook b6, queen takes a7, c takes d5. So three pawns each. E takes. Now, uh, yeah, rook b5 is played. Yeah, because otherwise, let's just check this out. Queen takes, it looks at d1. White plays check, and then gets the bishop out of trouble first, and then can safely take the rook. Big advantage to white. So rook b5, d6 is played here, which opens up lines, it seems. Uh, queen takes bishop c2 so getting the bishop out of the firing line and preventing the king using h7 uh, this is actually more accurate it seems than the immediate check because here uh, it looks as though this is only um, 
uh, about even although white uh, is threatening things like queen h6 I believe knight g4 might be uh, the solution here but this, this variation is is less accurate than bishop c2 so now big threats on on the back row we have g5 so for example this looks really committal g5 why if knight hg6 then the check here now there's bishop a3 and that's nasty so for example here king e2 white's bypassing all the tactics keeping that skewer on f8 and white will just be winning the exchange there massive advantage on g6 here check knight g4 there's queen c3 bishop f4 here is strong so bishop f4 and then just taking the exchange is possible okay so this is just very difficult so g5 played here bishop a3 queen d8 bishop e7 the two bishops are very very scary for black's king here queen e8 bishop f6 on bishop takes g5 there might be some counterplay with knight e f3 for example uh the queen coming to c6 there and then this kind of thing uh but white still ends up slightly better in some of these endings like this one white's white's actually got uh good winning prospects here a pawn up and a nice bishop so uh yeah it's still even that uh, is possible so bishop f6 though might even be stronger than bishop takes g5 rook b8 another pass pawn is pushed knight g4 now getting trying to get rid of the queens queen eight, queen e7 check knight g4 and now taking on g5 this is token and now we have going into you know seemingly dangerous self pin but stockfish eight as it all calculated well rook c7 as you might expect knight f6 King d3 going into a fork now, not just the self. Well, the self pin's gone, but now the fork, but now counter attacking h4. That liability there is being used. So knight f3. So threatening things like knight e5 check. Uh, that's threatening. So bishop d6, sorting that one out as well as the unprotected piece. Rook d8, rook g4 check, king h8, and now king e2, knight f6. So a very tactical exchange. Rook c4 is played here. Yeah, if um yeah, I mean th this looks as though uh white's well fundamentally a pawn up. So we have check. On rook takes d6, this is just better as, as well. On rook takes d just king takes better for white. So we have check though, trying to be a bit annoying, a bit of an improvement, maybe subtle, but it's still it's bad for black. Pawn down, outside pass pawn. Uh, this is actually a very, very promising advantage for white now. Dragging this pawn. The knight is not so good against the bishop here. White has done well to get this end game. The bishop drops back here now. And now this one, very, very good to support a7, encouraging Alpha zero to go into a self pin and now this wins material so exchange up and this is just technically winning this position the exchange up the white pawn is heading for f5 restricting black and uh yeah after king g8 uh it was resigned um adjudicated as a win for stockfish eight so stockfish eight yeah did take some pieces out of alpha zero uh over the hundreds of games played uh especially it's going to be dangerous in positions oh bad opening position or inferior opening positions controversial opening positions I'm not saying Shagorin's necessarily a bad especially for us humans it's not bad at all you know it's a surprise weapon but at, at the computer level uh stockfish a is going to like get rid of most of the counterplay and issues and use that bishop pair as it did here uh, quite vividly against the two knights uh, maybe, maybe that is evidence that 
it's, it's a little bit controversial to give up the bishop pair in this particular variation let's say that opening variation okay uh so yes that's the 20 games that i was given recently and i'm going to check out maybe some other games from the wider games available which might be of interest as well so we're not done yet with alpha zero on this on the king's crusher channel uh there'll be some other interesting games featured soon but uh probably mostly back to leader at the moment i i love neural network chess i hope you do too I, it is pretty fascinating a new kind of era of a different style of computer chess at least not necessarily at the moment stronger in terms of racing but a new style of ai chess which we can all be happy to be part of this interesting uh, era interesting times lie ahead so if you enjoyed this game video then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to come remember at chessworld.net you can play against other youtubers you can also check the youtube analysis of this and other games from the improved menu learn from the master's youtube order button comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe with the notification bell all really appreciated and there's a new teespring store in the description to check out for chess t-shirts okay thanks very much